everybody, my name is Sarah Jo. This week, I'm co-hosting music lessons with Carlos. See you! Welcome everybody to another live session in music lesson webinar with Carlos. Today we will cover different topics such as ear training, music theory, keyboard skills, chord progressions and contemporary voicings. We also have some new piano tutorials, so stay tuned and let's get started. Well, 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 thank you. Thank you, uh, <clears throat> uh, Sarah, for uh, the uh, solo transcription, a uh, Charlie Parker solo transcription. And Sarah Jo, she um, uh, played, yeah, the solo with her left hand. So that was part of her own uh, uh, challenge a left hand challenge to be able to uh, play a charlie parker solo with a keyboard with a left hand so yeah uh, i think it's quite an accomplishment okay and today we're gonna uh, warm up we're gonna warm up with our chromatic scales in e flat we're gonna work in e flat ascending and descending and uh treble clef and bass clef so why don't we start here we go. Do, di, re, re, mi, a, fi, sol, si, la, li, ti, do. Descending. Do, ti, te, la, le, sol, si. Now 
now we're going to take it to another level. See if you can do this. You're going to play, you're going to touch the notes on the keyboard, on the guitar or the bass or your instrument, but you're not going to play the note. Yeah? But you're going to sing like this. Do, di, re, ri, mi, pa, fi, sol, si, la, li, ti, and let's see, do. Okay, so this is a great workout. So you are singing, but you are still touching the, the notes and the keyboard. So you're still connecting the, uh, you're providing the kinesthetic element. Yeah? Now we're going to go descending. Do, ti, te, la, le, so, se, fa, mi, me, re, ra, do. Okay, so now you have a new homework, a new assignment, yeah? So first you can warm up just playing and singing. That's the foundation level. Foundation level is always good because it creates the musical memory. And then we go to the next level, which is the application level. Okay, so now that the memory has been established, yeah, let's see if we can actually apply what we know. Okay, good. So now let's move on. We're going to do the same, but now but in bass clef. Okay, so now we go to the foundation level. We're creating memory. So we're going to play and sing at the same time. Do, di, Descending. Do, ti, te, la, le, so, se, fa, mi, me, re, ra, do. Okay. Now, that was a foundational level. Now we're going to go to the next level. Now we're going to go to application. So we're going to play a triad with a high register. And we're going to sing the bass line. We're going to touch the notes on our keyboard, guitar, or bass, but we're not going to play the notes. We're going to sing them. And we're touching them. So still we're connecting our musical thought yeah, with the keys. Yeah? So here we go. Let's see if we can do it. Do, di, re, ri, mi, fa, fi, sol, si, la, li, ti, do, okay, now descending, do, ti, te, la, le, sol, se, fa, mi, me, re, ra, do, and hopefully we're going to end up on in pitch on the key center. Okay. So now um, you kind of get a gist yeah, of this uh, workout with chromatic scales. Yeah? And, and, and actually, we can apply this to, to any other type of scale that we are uh, working, or even melody line or bass line. Yeah? So first, we can play it and sing, play it and sing. And then let's see if we can sing touching the keyboard, touching the guitar, but not actually playing it which means we have to supply yeah, all the musical memory. We really have to hear it. We really have to have it internalized, yeah, and then we can play. Okay, since we're talking about scales, talking about scales, I, you know, some students were asking me about this scale, the symmetrical dominant scale, yeah, sometimes called the half whole, half tone, whole tone scale. Yeah, so there we have it. And let me, because we're going to build scales, let me zoom in a bit more. I can even zoom in a bit more. Um, oh, maybe, yeah, maybe this is good. Okay, so here we have a symmetrical dominant scale, and we're going to go through the scale. So we have a root, flat 9, sharp 9. Third, sharp 11, 5, 13, flat 7, root. Okay, so all we have here, 
we can use this voicing maybe. Yeah, so I'm gonna use this voicing, which is the 313 flat seven flat nine. We had to kind of establish the sound of the scale. And now we're gonna sing. Yeah. We're gonna just the root work, and I just hear it. Flat nine, sharp nine, three, sharp eleven, five, thirteen, flat seven, root. Okay, uh, so that was our symmetrical dominant scale. Yeah, but in a treble clef. Now let's do the same. Okay, so I'm gonna use the same chord. Yeah. And here we have our root, flat nine, sharp nine, three, sharp eleven, five, thirteen, flat seven, root. Okay, descending root, flat seven, thirteen. Five, sharp 11, 3, sharp 9, flat 9, root. And that's our... See, one of the things that I love to do in order to internalize scales is called the cluster technique. Yeah, and there we have it. Cluster pattern, yeah, on the symmetrical dominant scale. As you can see in the top row, which is HW, HW. So that's whole step, half step, whole step, half step, whole, half, whole, half. So if we're in C, we can have a, a half, whole, half, whole, half, whole, half, whole step. And then we have solfege. Yeah, so we're gonna call Do root Ra because we have a flat nine, Re because we have a sharp nine, Mi, our third, Fi because of a sharp 11. Sol because 5, La because 13, Te flat 7, and then Do is root. And I'm gonna just bring our our other, um, yeah, so, so that was it. Do, Ra, Re, Mi, Fi, Sol, La, Te, Do. Yeah, and then here we have the harmonic relationship of this scale. So now let's go back to solfege. And here is when things become fun. We are going to build our symmetrical dominant scale using solfege, or if it's too difficult, you can use the formula half whole, half whole, half whole, half whole. Yeah, in all 12 keys. We have time. It's going to take us seven minutes. So why don't we start? Maybe less. But we're going to build the clusters, but we're going to play note for note and we're going to sing. Yeah, so in, uh, we need to internalize not just the shape, not just the feeling, also the sound of the scale in our musical mind. So why don't we start? Do, ra, re, mi, fi, so, la, te, do. And that is symmetrical dominant in the key of C. Now we're going to go to F. Do, ra, re, mi, fi, so, la, te, do. Together. And B flat. B flat. We're gonna build our symmetrical dominant on B flat. Do ra re mi fi so la te do and together. E flat. And we're gonna build our E flat scale. Do Together. A flat. And here we go. Do, ra, re, be, so, la, te, do. And together. D flat. Do, ra, re, mi, fi, so, la, te, do. Together. G flat or F sharp. Do, ra, re, mi, fi, so, la, 
Now B. Do, Ra, Re, Mi, Mi, Sol, La, Te, Do. Together. E. Do. together. A. Do, Ra, Re, Mi, Mi, So, La, Te, Do. Together. D. Do, Ra, Re, Mi, Mi, So, Together and G here. Do, Ra, Re, Mi, Mi, So, La, Te, Do. Together. Okay. So that was good. So first we uh, saw the. Um, 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 symmetrical dominant scale and how it uh, is composed by the different uh, harmonic uh, <clears throat> notes like a flat nine, sharp nine. And then we worked with our symmetrical dominant but with solfege and the whole step, half step uh, layout. Now, and then we build it, you know, note by note. Okay, for those of you who are more advanced, yeah, then I would go to the next level application, which would be just to play the cluster like this. C, F, D flat, E flat, A flat, D flat, F sharp, B, E, A, D, G, and back to C. Yeah? So that type of workout is something that if you feel that uh, you really want to uh, work with chord scale based improvisation, that's a wonderful workout to do with every conceivable scale in all 12 keys. And also using different cycles. Yeah, right now I went through a cycle of fourths, but you can challenge yourself. Okay, I'm going to do cycle of major thirds. <laughs> Oh, there we have it. Then we can have C. Then we can go to E. Or we can go to A flat. We're going to practice that way. D flat. Then F sharp. B flat. E flat. G. B. Whoops. And C. Okay. Yeah, so those are different ways of working with our chord scales okay good yeah i'm glad that uh, we are doing um this type of work so now i want to go a bit more uh, to a foundational level and yes i have here my my um two five ones but i want to do something else i want to work with intervals and why intervals? Because that's something that we all are struggling with. At least all my students are struggling with intervals. Okay. In one interval, yeah, so, so there are different ways of going about intervals. Yeah, when, uh, you know, I went to school, yes, I was there in one class, in a theory class. Okay, this is an interval, and these are, you know, um, how it relates to a key. Yeah, and all of that was fine. And then uh, if I went to my ear training class, then uh, the teacher started to drill me. Intervals, intervals. Okay, why don't you learn the beginning of this song? And this is for a major second. The beginning of this other song is for a augmented fourth and so on. Okay, so that's the song that uh, Maria that I chose for my augmented fourth. Okay, but then later on, 
I realized that as a player, as an improviser, or as a composer, I need to see my intervals, boom, on the spot. Yeah, so uh, what I learned in school was nice, but just an introduction. Yeah, was a nice warm up. Yeah, I need to do something else. So, what are we gonna do now? We're gonna take this interval in augmented fourth. In augmented fourth is below three whole steps. One, two, three. Doesn't matter what note that I'm using, it's one, two, three. Okay, in B flat, one, two, three, three whole steps. That's gonna be our formula. And remember that exercise that we did the open space. I don't know if you remember, we did it so many times. Okay, so many times in which uh, we are uh, changing keys and changing uh, spaces on the keyboard all the time. Yeah, that's what I call the open space exercise. But we're going to do something similar to that, which is we're going to play the two notes together. Then we're going to go to another key. We're going to use this cycle, cycle of fourths, so C, F, B flat, E, and so on. Yeah, always clockwise. And we're going to change hands and change spaces. And that's going to be our interval workout. This is really good stuff. Yeah, this is how I like also to work with all my chords and voicings. Why don't we start? Everything ascending. So if I say C, we play C and F sharp. So next one, F, B flat, E flat, A flat. Everything is an augmented fourth ascending from the note I'm calling. B flat. G flat, B, E, A, D, G, and C. Okay, good. So we finished. Yeah, we did our augmented fourths ascending and we used our uh, uh, cycle of fourths. And why is it that we change well as a pianist yeah or if even if you're not a pianist but you want to learn uh, piano as a producer songwriter or as a second instrument to help you with your har a harmony and improvisation development yeah learning intervals and learn and learn to see them and play them in the keyboard is extremely useful uh, one of the things that I uh, teach my students is to be able to see all the intervals from a minor second to 13th ascending and descending yeah so let's say i'm with my student and uh, i don't know uh, one of my students michael yeah and i say okay michael uh, we have here a voicing and we're in the key of g and i want you to play this voicing which has a sharp 9 3 flat 13 flat 7 flat 9 sharp 11 and flat 7 on top yeah so even while i'm teaching this class yeah and i was doing this live webinar I'm still visualizing all the interval relationship in whatever key, in all 12 keys in my mind. <laughs> it's a little bit like musical Photoshop. You have all those layers. Yeah. So, yeah. And that's a skill. Yeah. That has helped me enormously. Yeah. So I don't have to struggle so much with voicings. Yeah. And trying to figure them out. But the interval layout is there creating an environment that supports me to be able to visualize all my voicings. Okay. Now, second exercise, augmented fourth descending, so three whole steps, one, two, three, half in E, one, two, three, oh, another uh, augmented fourth, I'm in A flat, one, two, three, okay, so that's going to be our perceptual process, and I want to change cycles, I don't want to do cycle of fourths anymore, what cycle should we do? And let's do with intervals, with augmented force. Yeah, let's do cycle of fifths. Okay, so we have here our cycle of fifths. Yeah, so we're going to go through all 12 keys in a different way. Okay, and now I'm going to call the top note, and you're going to play the top note in a augmented fourth descending. And then I'm going to call the next one, and you're going to change your hands. You're going to change registers. So we're going to go like this. So let's see if you can play with me. C. Now, next one. G. Next. D. A. E. B. G flat. D flat. 
A flat, E flat, B flat, F, and back to C. Okay, so that's the way I would practice, yeah, all my intervals and chords and triads and seven chords and tension substitution uh, chords if they are close position, yeah, so I'm changing my hands and changing registers and always exploring different, different uh, cycles, okay, that was good, you know, I feel that we did some good work today. And since we have done scales and we have done our intervals, let's do some, let's uh, work with some basic chord progression. Uh-huh, pop progression. We're going to work with this pop progression. One, five, one, four, one, five, four, one. Yeah. And we can build so many different songs with this chord progression. And now we did it in the key of C. Maybe we did it in the key of F. But now we're going to go to D flat. We're going to learn to read in D flat major key as we have our five flats. Oh boy. If that's too difficult, uh, just uh, follow the video and that would be okay. Yeah? I'm going to leave the video on so you always can, uh, you know, check, check uh, the video later. Okay, so we have D flat in root position. So in the middle you have actually the, the inversion of... Uh, 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 each triad. So we, 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 we have always in any triad, we have root, first, and second inversion. Yeah, so here we have D flat, root position, A flat first, back to D flat root, G flat second, E flat root, A flat first, G flat second, and D flat root. Okay, now, we're going to play with our band. Our band, and here we go. Two, three, and. Getting my band. Yes, I'm getting my band. And I should be getting sound. Let me see. Okay, I think that's enough. So here we go. We're going to play together. Two, three, and. Okay, I think I know what the problem is. I know what the problem is. So just be patient with me and I'm going to solve the problem. Okay, I think we didn't have bass and now it's soft okay here we go now we have bass three and So that was our progression in D flat, but we were starting in root and then we went through the whole chord progression and we end up on root. So that's a technique that I like to use, especially working with pop. 
Yeah, in pop progressions, in, 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 and even jazz uh, progressions in the technique is we're going to start with a certain inversion yeah, or position of the chord, go through the whole song, yeah, and we are going to force ourselves, we're going to force our voice leading to end on the same, on the same position. Okay, now we're going to go into first inversion. So we're going to check first inversion. And we are going to start in flat, first inversion, A flat, second, B flat, first, G flat, root, D flat, first, A flat, second, G flat, root, and D flat first. Okay, so now we're gonna play. One, two, three, and. So now we practice uh, this progression in root position and first inversion. So now we're gonna go to we're gonna go to second inversion. I wanna boost my bass bass volume a bit. Okay, second inversion. So we have a, our one chord or D flat major in second inversion. <laughs> A flat root, D flat second, G flat first, D flat second, A flat root, G flat first, and back to D flat second. Okay, so we explore this area, this area, and then this area of the keyboard with our voice leading. So now we're going to play with our band. Excellent. So we practice our one five one four one five four one progression in the key of D flat. Okay, so that was good. Yeah, hopefully, yeah, progressions like this pop progressions. If we wanna, um, uh, I don't wanna say the word studio player, you know, because everybody now these days has a home studio, so everybody has to learn this. Yeah. And I also write the voice leading just using whole notes. Why? So that we can kind of explore with our own uh, rhythmic patterns. Yeah, we're not uh, tight with a specific rhythmic pattern unless we have to. Okay, so now I would like to... Uh, last week, 
Last week we were working with our walking base in F. Yeah? And I still want to uh, go back because uh, once we establish our walking baseline in F, there are so many things that we can do. We can do a, a workouts a, with a core tones ascending, core tones descending, scales going up, scales going down. And uh, Sarah Jo created a wonderful um, a, a, a series of tutorials yeah, in uh, blues in all 12 keys. So last week we played a uh, key of E flat and A flat. So this week I would like to feature the next two keys that I want to play. I want to play the key of D flat and G flat. So here we go. One, two, one. Okay, so blues and D flat, yeah. And I would like you to check the bass line. The, the ba the, and also, uh, something fascinating about uh, um, uh, this series of tutorials is that the bass line is different on every single key. So it's not just, a, okay, I just write in the key of C, I just cut and paste and I play now. Yeah? So the bass line is completely different from key to key, and the voicings are different. The voice leading is completely different also from key to key. So that's why I thought that uh, this uh, series of uh, tutorials are extremely useful. Yeah, so why don't we start? Okay. Great, very nice, very nice tutorial. And I just want to um, mention a few things. Yeah. So one thing is um, Sarah Joe is using uh, four, week, uh, four notes, sometimes four notes and sometimes three note voicings. Okay, so we have... And then she's using a chromatic approach yeah, to, go to, to go to the next chord. Yeah, so this is this is uh, a really really fun tutorial to work with, and just work with that bass line uh, and uh, in in those voicings. Okay, so now I would like to feature the next. Um, okay, so now we're gonna uh, work, uh, listen to the blues in G flat uh, tutorial. So here we go. Okay, thank you. Thank you, uh, Sarah Joe, for those uh, two tutorials. So next week, we're going to continue with our whole series. Yeah, so we're going to listen and uh, see if we can catch yeah, uh, some of the uh, aspects of uh, voice leading and voicing that uh, Sarah Joe did in, uh, in, in her blues uh, tutorial series. Okay. So now, maybe we have time for one more thing. One more thing. What are we going to do? I would like... 
Last week, we were working with this chord progression. In, uh, we finished in 2, 3, and 3, 2. But last week, we had a Montuno which was just basic broken. So now we're going to break it. Yeah, now we're going to break it. Yeah. three clavi and we're gonna take it uh, through different tempos so I like to start maybe around 132 beats per minute yeah and that's gonna be um, useful yeah and then we're gonna take it up 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 a notch yeah so you all can hang in there with me yeah let's see if we all can <laughs> manage that uh, tempo increase here we go move up let's move up in tempo how about let's work with a hundred and forty five beats per minute and here we go one two three and gonna go to let's go to 156 that seems to be a tempo that many songs use get into the medium up tempos let's go to let's go to a hundred and sixty four that's another tempo that many songs are written in and here we go So far, we are comfortable with that tempo, yeah? And always I have to remind you to keep your wrists light open. And I tend to play a bit on the short um, um, uh, side, yeah? Maybe because um, over the years I had my uh, uh, salsa piano heroes, one of them, Papo Luca, you know, and that's kind of the a, a touch. And uh, he uses in many of his uh, albums, even though he can play really hard, but it's still, you know, I can see a light wrist. Okay, now we're going to move on. Let's move on to a hundred and... 172 beats per minute. So now we're going to go a bit faster. Let's 
go up. Let's bump it up a bit. Now let's see if we can go all the way to 184 beats per minute. So now this might be tricky. Yeah. So keep the wrists light and open. And here we go. Next week, I want to do the same, but in 3 2 clave. So there we have it 3 2 clave. So this is going to be different. 1, 2, 3, and uh -huh. we have 1. So we have the downbeat. Yeah, we're going to have the downbeat on the, on the second measure. Okay, so we're going to work with this Montoon on, uh, in 3-2 clave next week, so stay tuned. And I think uh, we reached a time where we can say... So thank you for being with me in this live broadcast. We covered a lot of material and we're going to continue to do so in our next class. I'll see you next week, same time, same channel. Until then, have a wonderful week. Practice your instrument every day. And listen, and play lots of good music. See you next week.